Hello everyone, this is Stacy with SF Johnson Consulting and Construction Services with another lovely episode of The Basics of, and now we're going to talk about HVAC or the mechanical set, but mainly when we talk about mechanical in, in the uh, construction set, we're talking about, well mechanical really is the HVAC and plumbing processes. But in the construction set, we are focusing on the HVAC. So all of the equipment that either moves, heats, or cools the air. So we're talking about fans and air, um, uh, uh, rooftop units, air handlers, exhaust fans, that kind of thing. And so when we look at the mechanical set, it's always going to give you a list of all of your equipment. So... Uh, even if it's the same equipment, same specifications, they're going to list it all in your equipment schedule. So you don't have to guess or go to the plan to count how many of whatever. It's always going to be here. But in terms of the uh, grills, yeah, it'll give you just one type of grill. But yeah, you'll have to count the grills on the plan. But the equipment itself, everything will be listed in the schedule. And what I always do is, whatever is listed in the schedule, we would just rewrite it because we need the cost of the equipment and the cost to install it. Okay, and so when we talk about the basics of HVAC, we have our equipment. Now we have to, let's take that off. Let's take that off. Okay, so when we have our HVAC equipment, what do we have? We have either... Uh, spiral ductwork that's signified by this and the radius of the ductwork six inches or we have rectangular ductwork which is signified by this something by something so this is an eight by eight inch and it's always inches rectangular ductwork here we have uh, angles so we have 90 degree angles sometimes we'll have I call this a 45. That's the price I give it for a 45 degree angle. Those little thingies right there, anytime it's not straight, because there's a cost for the ductwork for the straight measures and then any of the 45 or 90 degree angles. And so when you are uh, completing your HVAC takeoff, that's just how you have to do everything. So by all of the different sizes and depending on the set of plans you might have to guess right because there's nothing here but I'm assuming this and this is the same size that's why they didn't write it twice because it is definitely bigger than this one right so we say that this stretch is 16 by 14 then we have a 16 by 14 90 degree okay and so that's all you do when you're talking about the HVAC plan all of the stretches linear you know how many linear feet 10 by 8 and this is a 10 by 8 90 degree angle okay and then we have right here's 18 a 16 by 18 return grill and with the duct up to the second floor okay so what would we do here we'd have a 16 by 18 90 degree angle this is what I do because we have to go up right your ductwork is rigid so you have to have straight pieces and then connect it to 90 degree pieces and it's not flexible the only portion of flexible ductwork you can allow to use it are at the grills and it this is a symbol for a flexible ductwork and it's usually no more than like five feet max three to five feet so that's what that means and so we have an 8 inch spiral ductwork connected to a flexible ductwork that's connected to the grill. So the flexible ductwork connected to the grill is flexible. It, it is not rigid. It moves. So you don't have to worry about like a 90 degree angle for it to go down. You got to use your imagination that all of the HVAC equipment is up where you can't see it just like in your regular house you can't see it it's all on the other side of the drywall and in a commercial establishment it's all on the other side of the acoustical ceiling tile only thing we see what are the grills so all of this is behind all of that running here but then at some point at the grill it comes down to the grill and the air blows out okay so 
if you don't see a flexible duck uh, work symbol, like we don't see one here, then I'm going to assume it's a uh, 10 by 8 and then a 10 by 8 90 degree to angle going down to the return grill R1. Okay, so you have to keep that in mind. So when you're doing the takeoff for an HVAC, you have your equipment given to you on the equipment schedule. You don't have to ever worry about that. But then you go into the all of the ductwork. You measure the spiral ductwork as opposed to the rectangular ductwork. And then, <coughs> excuse me, and then your 90 degrees and 45 degree angles and all of your grills, return grills, supply grills are always next to the equipment. And um, all of your your 90 degrees. And then all of your supply grills usually come with the damper. And so that's what is a symbol for a damper. So you want to choose from your uh, cost book this, uh, this type, whatever S2 is. That'll give us the size, whatever, and the next size and the size of the grill from the schedule. Okay, and then you have to make allowances for these adapters where we go from 12 by 10 to a 8 by 10. You can add 10%. You can look in the cost book and find that adapter that changes from this to that. Okay. All of those things need to be taken into account, even though you don't really see it on the plan. You need to think about it when you do that. So again, if you're not given flexible, then you need to account for the distance down, which is a 90 degree angle of six inch rectangular 90 going down to the grill. If you're using flexible, you don't have to worry about it because flexible will go down. There's no 90 required. Okay, and one last thing is usually the ductwork has a lining, a one inch uh, like uh, insulation lining. So you have to account for that because a lot of the co uh, cost books just give you the cost per linear foot for the ductwork, but not the lining. Okay, so if you look at an estimate, we get all of the, and you know, I, I usually <laughs> don't put it in any particular order just as long as I have it on there. So an eight inch round, and then we had a 90 cost per linear foot, and then the cost each for the 90s and the 45s. So all of, all of the ductwork and the 90s associated with it. Then all of the equipment costs. And remember, all this you're going to get from the cost book. You're not going to guess. You're not going to. A good cost book's going to tell you the man hour unit, how long does it take, cost unit per linear foot to install one linear foot of this. So you're never guessing. Okay, and then again, uh, you go all the way down, you got your equipment, and then we'll have our grills, return room grills, um, supply grills all of that stuff then the ductwork lining for what applies and then of course we the specialty trades have the permit so you want to include that and always include some extra spaces for stuff lifts and really a, we could add a, another cost for testing the system in man hours if you want to add that additional cost but uh, yeah that's pretty much it. So again, to recap, when we look at our plan, mechanical set cover sheet, right? It's going to tell us all of our equipment. So we don't have to worry about counting from the plan. We can just note it, go right from here to our estimate. And, you know, depending on, there'll be a different cost based on the cubic feet of air, exhaust fans per minute. You know, if you do this for a living, you know what the cost of this stuff should be. But the cost book is going to help you with the man hour totals, how long it's going to take you. So each one of these is a different size exhaust fan because I can, it's giving out a different amount of air, so it's probably a different size. So it's a different amount of man hours to install it. So that's why you want to use a good cost book. And everything's not going to take 30 minutes and everything's not going to take an hour. But based on construction standards, that's why we use the cost book. So especially in competitive bidding, if you're going to be close, then you need to use cost book. 
It just that's just it. You're like a baby has to wear a diaper. You need to use a cosper. I don't know how that equates, but it's just something you just need to do to do a good job. All right, so that's all your equipment. Then you go to your plans and do would have a good uh, linear tool to do your measurements. Or you need your linears, your changes from one size to the other. Good cost book's going to tell you what that is. And everything in the cost book's going to be based on, it's, it's just going to be crazy. All the possible sizes of rectangular ductwork is going to be there and you'll be able to get the price and the man hour totals. So all your linears, all your elbows, if it doesn't look like it's flexible and you know these are going down into down, like an angle down into the ceiling, you need to have a 12 by 12 90, two of them to go down. And then really, if you wanna get in real detail is you want, uh, for your equipment, there are uh, the cost to connect that equipment, all the rings that are associated with the equipment and all that stuff. But again, if you do this for a living, you know what I'm talking about. So all your linears, all your 90s, all your, your return grills, supply grills, flexible ductwork, and then all the lining that's associated with it. And then you come out with a nice professional pretty estimate before overhead and profit and then you have to figure out what that is and I said I was going to have a class on what's included in overhead and what's actually included in a profit you know there are certain things you need to think about before coming up with it just 10 percent 15 percent but if you have any questions related to this want to take a class please let me know um give me your thoughts give me a like subscribe and uh, make sure to join in the next class. Talk to you soon.